today on Divorce Court. Some days, it's impossible to live with someone who never thinks they're wrong. Karis turns into a complete beast. Punches holes in the wall, bad attitude, hollering, screaming, yelling. I can work on myself and my anger, but I can't change anything about him if he does not want to put in the work. If things don't change, I really just don't see us moving to the next level. I thought we were meant to be together forever until we started having those communication problems. Once those started, everything completely went in circles. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Cara Bennett and Fred Jackson, Jr. The two of you have been together five years. You, amongst you, you have three children from previous relationships. Um, uh, Ms. Bennett, you want to end this relationship, and you would like, and Mr. Jackson would like $1,085 for rents and bills that she left behind when she moved out abruptly without your knowledge. We will get to that momentarily, but first I will start with Ms. Bennett. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and how we got to divorce court today? Your Honor, I have loved this man since I was 15 years old. In fact, at 15, I remember standing in his dad's window and telling him that he would be my husband and that I would have his child. Okay? Um, from that point on, we had a little bit of a relationship. I ended up moving back to Illinois with my mom, and we got separated because I moved out of state. Well, come back to the state that we currently reside in, and I would see him almost everywhere. We would bump into each other. It was like it was almost meant for me to see him no matter mm -hmm. where I went. Mm -hmm. And so at one point in time, my cousin was like, mm -hmm. she, she's like, you need to start talking to people, and you, I want you to get out and mingle. She introduces me to somebody, puts the person on the phone. The person is Fred, who I have not seen in all these years. So I felt like all of this was really meant to be, like it was a fairy tale. I don't know who started this fairy tale nonsense, <laughs> but I'd like to dig him up and smack him in the back <laughs> of the head. Seriously. <laughs> because everybody, you know, you get that initial rush of love and there's a couple of coincidences and it's meant to be. You know, eight months in, y'all try to shoot one another. Mr. Jackson, <laughs> did you, did she get that generally correct? Or yep. is there anything you need to add? Nah, she pretty much uh, got She's that okay correct. She's okay until now. Yes, okay, just yes, checking with you. Ms. Bennett. Yes, ma'am. Keep, keep going. Tell me how we got from fairy tale to divorce court. All right. We dated for about six months without living in the house together. After that six month period, we moved into our home for the both of us together, okay? We moved into this house. It's and you both had children at the time by other people, yes, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We moved into this house, and because our credit was not where it should be, the landlord wanted us to pay $2,550 to move in. That's three mm -hmm. months plus deposit. Right. Okay? I footed that bill on my own. I did that, okay? And um, Fred feels like because I, I moved out, I should pay him half of everything that was going on at the same time, I left you there. Like, I left you in a house that I paid for and moved in my own house. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not saying that I'm not responsible for it. But you want to take get credit for what you put in in yes, the beginning. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Why did the relationship go south? Okay, the relationship started to go south. Fred comes in the room one morning, he said, baby, let me use your phone. I said, okay. He come get the phone, he's trying to call his brother so he can go to work. I knew he wasn't talking to his brother, Your Honor, because of the way he was talking on the phone. He said, hey, what you doing? That's not how he talks to his brother. So the red flag what? automatically came up. He brings the phone back to me and didn't close out the MoCo space. So now I see all these emails and conversations that you having with other women on my cell phone. It's not Can true. Can you tell That's me the nature true. of those conversations? It was more of sexual explicit, um, you're not that far, I can come meet you, and it wasn't nothing that you should have been saying or that you would have said had I been there. Okay, Mr. Jackson, would you care to respond to that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, part of that is true, but a lot of it's not true. I mean, she did find uh, some, some things that was in an old account that I had that was not active for the longest, and I mean, <clears throat> she found some old stuff in it and seen that and seen some explicit stuff, but she didn't find farther as me going and meeting up with the girl or going to see her or anything like that. Was any of the contact that you made with any of the of the ladies inappropriate? I mean, is it, uh, while you were current stuff while you were with her, did you did I, you flirt with the line a little no, bit? No, I really don't think I did because the conversation that was going on was prior to me and her being together. I mean, we moved in the house and everything, but like I said, I mean, I wasn't focused on no 
social media site, I'm knowing that we got a new relationship and then, you know what I'm saying, everything is supposed to be going right. Yeah. I'm going to go back to you. What other things that ha has he done that makes you believe he's cheated on you? Okay, Your Honor, before we move forward, I would like to give you this. He said that was oh, I got an email that he just sent to somebody last year, 2015. Okay, While you been, two were living together? Yes, ma'am. I've been in a relationship with what? this man since 2011. Now, I'm sorry it's not clear because I'm not a social media person. So but you took a picture of it with a flag? With my okay, phone. I got it, so I got that, it, I so got that I could go back and look at this and remind me that this is not what you want to deal with. But Let you... Mr. Jackson see what she's got there. And, and Mr. Jackson, do you care to explain it? Can you explain it or is it not you? Uh, yes, this is me. This is me. <laughs> yeah. But, but this was a big misunderstanding when this came about because, um, at one while I was getting like a whole bunch of scam, well, I wouldn't say scam, spam emails. I mean, <sighs> people were sitting... But why would you reply to spam with high sexy? I mean, because for one, for one, I kept getting them and I was really like, man, who is this sending me these emails and stuff? So I kind of immediately went in investigation mode mm. and I did send some things back. How does high sexy give you an investigation? <laughs> I mean, because the, the message that, that was coming to me was sexually explicit. So uh. I'm thinking in my mind in investigation mode, if I reply, <laughs> yeah, if I reply, that's, you know what I'm saying, like the, the, the... Keep working on it, keep working on it. <laughs> Eventually... Well, well... <laughs> well, like I said, if I replied to the messages like they came to me, maybe I'd be able to find out a little more information. So I was doing that. Well, yeah. Did it ever occur to you you could just delete them, block them, that's, and then yeah, it's I mean, over? I mean, yeah, it did, but, you know, I kept getting them. And it, it, no matter how much, much I deleted them, I still was getting them. So I was like, man, Did you ever find on? out who was sending them? No, I found out at the end of the day it was nobody. It was spam. He said something about calling the police or something like that, and I kind of called her bluff, and I'm like, well, you won't do that. And I'm thinking that she won't do it. And uh, she actually did it. So uh, I had to think quick. Um, I went ahead on top of the roof. So, Mr. Jackson, I want you to give me a couple of examples of her uncontrollable temper. Um, okay. Well, she does have an uncontrollable bad attitude and temper for the wrong situations, I think. Um, first of all, punching holes in walls. I mean, that I don't think... Uh, uh... Why did she punch a hole in a mm. wall? Well, it was one time, I mean, uh, this was a story. Um, well, um... For every action, there's a reaction. She, Ms. Ms. Bennett. I'm sorry, Your Honor. All right. Well, we was having an argument over text messages. I mind you, this was over text messages the mm. whole time. Right. And um, she said something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but she said something smart. And basically what I said, I called her stupid. Mm -hmm. Stupid in the text message. This is a text message the whole time. And, uh, oh, you two were texting fight yes, back and yes, forth. I got you. And, um... She said something about calling the police or something like that, and I kind of called her bluff, and I'm like, well, you won't do that. And I'm thinking that she won't do it. And uh, she actually did it. And um, I <laughs> mind you that I had just got a new job, and I really didn't want to lose my job, and I had um, a warrant for uh, traffic. It, I mean, it basically, it wasn't, it wasn't anything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But basically, I was thinking I ain't trying to lose my job. I'm knowing if I got this little traffic warrant, they're going to take me to jail. So she's, she knows that. So uh, I had to think quick. Um, I went ahead on top of the roof. <laughs> yeah. It sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but that's what I did. But uh, long story short, I hid, and uh, she was talking to the police or whatever, and they leave. I stand up on top of the roof, and I was going to get down, and a nosy neighbor, which was her friend. There he is. Yeah, there he is right there. <laughs> And she's like, oh, there he is. Okay, y'all come back. Basically, come get him. And I'm like, what? I'm like, if she... Did they, did they actually put you in jail? Yes. How long so did you have to stay? I ain't stay but, but the night. I got mm -hmm. out because, I mean... Ms. Bennett, did you do that nonsense? Yes, ma'am. Now, were you really scared that you needed to call the police and you were just, no, just I wasn't giving scared. him the business? I wasn't scared. I Let was me trying tell to you prove something. a point. Joe and his buddies on the force got other things to do. Yes, ma'am. Joe right. has things right. he you're needs right. to take care of. You're right. You're right about They're that. They're not referees. You're right. And because you're not adult enough to have a conversation with your man, don't call Joe. Yes, ma'am. But my thing was, I wanted them right. to be there while either 
I went in to get my things because I was going to leave. So it wasn't that I felt threatened. I wanted to defuse the situation before I knew it was going to start because the argument had already been heated since the night before. I understand that that's not... What? Well, let me ask you this. Ms. Bennett, do yes. you admit to having a bit of a temper? Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Jackson, can you tell me another example of when that temper has gotten out of control? Yeah, we did have kind of some disagreements and fights over the vehicle that we had. I mean, we basically went in on the one vehicle. I paid notes on it. She paid mm -hmm. some notes on it. And just because I was trying to get everything right far as my license and everything, I would just use it just to go to work. I mean, she kind of got unfair about that situation, knowing that I put in just as much as she put in. You know, so... Well, how did she get unfair about it? Say, I, I, I like to play basketball. I used to go to the gym. I mean, she always just give me the blues about going to the gym. Oh, well, you just need to go to work. You know, and I'm like, well, if, if I don't have any free time to do anything I want to do and just be at home, I, I don't have no life. Yeah, and I get that, Mr. Jackson, but you got to get your license right first. I yeah, cannot, I understand I, I that. Cannot I understand rubber that. stamp saying, hey, it's cool to drive without a license. Yes, ma'am. Get your license straight. I understand that. Get your license straight. Your Honor, may I tell you something? Yes. On top of that, he has had my first truck towed twice. So it's not that I'm just waking up and I'm being spiteful and decide, no, today I don't want to let you drive my car. I have had incidences to where it is, I don't want to keep going through this. My second vehicle, he helped me pay my down payment and has paid one truck note. I have had this truck almost 10 months, okay? What? So going in, no. No, ma'am. No, I got you. And I have ample reason. Like I said, I he does you. not have a valid license. He has had my first truck towed twice. The, the first time I had to pay to get it out. I got so it. I'm not just being spiteful. Being spiteful, it's be, it's causing you real economic harm. Yes, ma'am. Do you think he's ever cheated on you? I don't think we have a cheating problem, but my thing is, if you had a mentality to send sexual explicit things to a woman, and she decides she wants to come meet you, you have intentions on doing something. Are you currently sending sexual no, explicit? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So, Ms. Bennett, tell me why, after five years, you two, you left. You moved out so abruptly. Um, I was sick of going through the arguments. I was sick of wanting to believe Fred when he tells me that this email is for somebody else. So I put this post on Craigslist to see how many likes my friend would get, but he put his picture up there. I wanted to honestly make my relationship work. I wanted to. I tried everything I could. I wanted to sweep it under the, the rug. I wanted to get past it. I wanted to do whatever I could. I just... I'm just so hurt by it, I don't think I can. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson, um, is it just about the emails and stuff, or, or are there other issues that cause you to argue every day? I mean, the majority of the arguments that we have, I mean, is basically because our attitudes kind of kind of rares up, you know, and, and, and after so long, you know what I mean, I, I really well, don't want to... Give me some examples of, of the things she rears up about. It seems like to me it's petty and, and I don't see a reason for her doing that. But just say uh, we have an argument and, and like I told her, I, I, I tried to keep a good communication between us. Mm -hmm. And I know she doesn't talk much, but she's the type of person that when she gets mad, she shuts down. She don't, she don't want to keep going on. But I the... need a story. I need an example okay. so I can see what she's doing. Okay, okay. Say, um... We was having a disagreement one time about, uh, I forget what it was, but basically, I, I try to calm the situation down and, and try to talk it through so we can get an understanding. But if she doesn't agree with it, she's gonna pop off with an attitude. This is how it goes. She pops out with an attitude, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep talking to see if she's gonna calm down. And, and her attitude is steady going up. Ms. Ben, I gotta ask you a question, because I haven't heard a story here yet that is separation worthy. You fighting over old emails. Not old. You fighting over, you know. Pit. Do you think he's ever Pit. cheated on you? I don't think we have a cheating problem, but my thing is, if you had a mentality to send sexual, sexual explicit things to a woman and she decides she wants to come meet you, you have intentions on doing something. Are you currently sending sexual no, explicit? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I mean, this instance right here, this was about, uh, I say about six months ago. And when this was happening, 
I mean, I would respond to some of the emails, but when she found them, that's how she seen me respond. She didn't see anybody responding back to me or anything. And I'm like, okay, I found out. But was out. the response crooked? I mean, was it was it inappropriate? It was... I mean, the response uh, was was corresponding what I got from them. Like they'll send me something, and I'll be like, uh, I'll say a little something uh, corresponding what they said to me. Yeah, but see. You can't use other people's actions to excuse your own. Someone can send me a highly charged you right. sexual sexual thing. <clears throat> All I do is delete it. You're right. You're right. Well, like I said, that's what I started doing at first, but the emails kept coming. And you keep deleting. Now, Mr. Jackson, I, 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 I want to ask you this. Had she not left, would you still be in it to win it, trying to make it work? Well, I tried. I mean, I tried for a long time, and I was always open and willing to give it the benefit of the doubt of changing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, after a while, I seen no changing, and I just got to a point where I, I just can't do it no more. Let, let me say this. Everybody talks about a fairy tale relationship, it's meant to be, and then they go into the relationship and relax because they think it's meant to be. Even if he's the right guy or she's the right woman, you've got to work at it. You know, you can't defend a relationship from the outside in. You have to do defend it from the inside out. You can't be hollering and screaming about reaching out here. You need to be comforting, calming, and bringing, bringing him home. Do you, you, you see what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. You see what I'm saying? Mr. Jackson, tell me about the $1,085 you're seeking from her. Um, well, when she left, I mean, like I said, she left me high and dry. I got rent due, I got bills due, and these are bills that you helped me accumulate. So, I'm wondering... What was the arrangement between the two of you, two of you with respect to the bills? Well, we always tried to keep a, uh, go half and half 50 type 50? of thing. 50 50 Ms. Bennett? Yes. What do you have to say about that? You know, he has bills still left in my name, Your Honor, that I got a phone put in my name for him. He never paid that, and he's not trying to go back and pay it, but he wants to come after me. Did you me. bring any of that here so I can resolve all of that? Um, yes, ma'am. I have a right. Thank you. Do you dispute any of her contentions with respect to how much she's put in the house? Uh, no. I mean, I know she's working and she put forth uh, money and everything to go in the house, but corresponding to this bill that she's saying, I mean, yeah, I did have a phone in her name, but I got her a phone. I bought her a phone. Man, I, got, I, I got you. I got right. you. Listen, you two were in there playing house and doing things together. It is so hard to tease out that $1,000 because I can't ever make it even. She put $2,555 on her deposit. Then you got this and you got that. So the, the fact that she bounced, though inappropriate, yes, and did not give him an opportunity to economically adjust his situation, I can't say it was an act that cost him $1,085. It just, just, just made him uncertain for a moment. So, and it doesn't mean that yes. you cost him any money. So I'm not going to award him any money, but Ms. Bennett, you got to be a better person. Yes, You got to learn to control your temper. I want to. If you're loud, proud, crazy, your kids are going to be loud, proud, and crazy, and you don't want to have that. You understand yes, that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. Thank you. After being here today, I feel like it may be possible for us to work this out, but he has to learn that he has to quit pushing my buttons. If he don't want the beats, he got to quit pushing the buttons. I've known her since I was 15, and uh, if you have good communication, I think the relationship could be saved, but we both have to play both parts to come together and make the relationship work.